Hey everyone, it's Jamie here from Ecom Masterclass and in this video I'll be going over how you can set up Google conversion tracking. I'll be using a little bit of Shopify's theme editor here and their access to your themes code, but I'll walk you through step by step on how you can do this entire process. Also not going to be using an app here, so you're not going to be charged any extra fees for setting up your Google conversion tracking here. So make sure you stay until the end of the video and watch closely as I go step by step. If you enjoy any of this content, I would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below as well. So to start, let's make sure that you have your conversion action first set up in your Google ads account. So what you want to do is head to tools here and then go to conversions under measurement. And this will let you create a new conversion action. So what you want to do is go to this blue button at the top plus new conversion action. You're going to hit that one there. This is going to let you set up a purchase here. So rather than importing, I'll create a new one here for the website. I'll hit website. I'm just going to call this. Oh, actually I'll need a website domain here. So it's going to help me track to see if it has any suggestions for setting this up. I'm going to pass it to the masterclass demo store here for my demo Shopify store. So rather than going to it by website pages, I'm going to go down to create conversions actions manually using code. I'll hit this plus icon here. So it's going to bring me to the conversion action details. What I can then say it's a purchase give it a name and specify which value to use. So what I'll do first is go to select category. For the category, I will select purchase. The conversion name, I'll leave this as purchase. Under value, I'll put use different values for each conversion. The default value, I'll just leave it as zero there as we'll be using Shopify's own inputs when this event is created to give it a customized value. And for count, I'll just leave this as every. That's going to be recommended for purchases because every purchase is valuable. I'll leave everything else here as default in terms of the timelines. Then I'll just hit done in the bottom left. Once that's done, you just want to hit save and continue. I'm going to remove this website events here as we did the manual one from code. This is going to be our event snippet here. I'll click on see event snippet. I'll leave it as page load. Then I'll go to copy here. This is going to copy it to my clipboard and I can then go add this in Shopify. So what I'll do next is from the Shopify dashboard, you want to go to the left hand side here. You're going to load up these settings here on the left. And from there, you want to go down to checkout and accounts. From there, you're going to run a scroll to the bottom of the page all the way to additional scripts on the order status page. So you should have copied that event snippet from Google. I'm just going to paste it in here and it shouldn't be too long here, but it's going to say where to send the event the default value, currency, and transaction. So I'll hit save here. I will be doing a little bit of editing further, but that is the first step. So once that first step is done, we're gonna add a few more changes here. Shopify does have a custom script listed here. It's gonna add things such as the currency and the order number. And if we scroll down to the dynamic section, which is gonna be the one we're actually gonna be looking for here, we want the check to total subtotal price here. So this is gonna be, instead of using that default value, we use Shopify's dynamic value. So we're gonna copy this one here. Again, I'm gonna do control C or command C here to copy this code. We'll go back to the additional script section. I'm gonna paste this additional one in here. This one is gonna be the correct one, but we're gonna to wanna to copy some of the variables over. So we can see order number is gonna be auto-generated. Currency is gonna be auto-generated. Value is gonna be auto-generated. So that means the only additional thing that we need to replace is gonna be the send to. You wanna copy this send to line, and I'm just gonna replace the send to with the one that came from our actual event tag. You can use a text editor to save these changes as well. I just did it in this little tech box here. What I'm going to do is remove that original script tag that we added originally. So in terms of our final script here, we should have if first time access, this is going to be a comment here. So just going to be for our informational purposes. And we'll see things such as a script tag, it's a G tag event conversion, sending to this, which is gonna be our account, the value dynamically inputted, the currency dynamically inputted, and the transaction ID dynamically inputted, closing the tag, and then the ending the if statement for if it's the first time access. I'll hit save there. It is a little complicated, but just make sure you're putting in the right lines. And I'll leave a link to this article here so you can go find this exact code snippet. I wanna take a second here to thank our sponsor, ProfitCalc, the one-click profit calculator available on the Shopify app store. It's gonna allow you to skip your spreadsheets and get back to growing your store with real-time calculations. All you have to do is select the date range you're looking for to get a variety of different detailed analytics, as well as your true profit calculations here to make it really easy to understand your store's performance. There's also a variety of different detailed reports and it's gonna integrate seamlessly with your ad accounts such as Facebook, Google, Bing, Snapchat, TikTok, and Pinterest. There's a link in the description to access a 15 
14-day free trial. You can also search Profit Calc on the top left here and look for this logo to find the Shopify app listing as well. In terms of one final step, we'll need to add the overall Google tag. And so if you go back to the conversion action that we set up, above the measure individual conversions with event snippets, there's going to be the overall Google tag here. So if you click try again, or it should say set up tag, as I already clicked it once, you go to start measuring data. Then on the second step will be install Google tag, as I'm going to create a new one here. So once you click that, if you go to the bottom left, hit next, this will take you to the next step. So what we'll do is we'll install this manually as well as Shopify is not listed. But again, this is going to be a similar process. Where we're going to copy and paste this in, now this isn't gonna require any additional changes, which is nice. And I'll show you exactly where to paste this code. So I'm gonna hit copy here, which will copy this to the clipboard. And then from there, I'll go back into the Shopify dashboard. I'm going to close the checkout section here, head to online store on the left. And from here, what I'm gonna recommend you do is under the three dots, hit duplicate. It's gonna create a copy of your current theme code in case you accidentally make any changes here that are breaking, you wanna make sure that you can quickly restore to an older version. So once you've duplicated here, you should see a duplicate below, as well as the date it was added. Hit these three dots again, go down to edit code, and this will open up the code files for your Shopify store. So it is a little intimidating here, but we're only gonna need one section, and we're just gonna paste it in what's called the theme.liquid file. Every Shopify theme should have this section, and we wanna paste it between the top of the head here and the bottom. I would recommend putting this at the bottom. So I'll scroll down here on the left and you're essentially gonna go until you find this head section. It's the closing head one. It's gonna be the left arrow, right slash head, right arrow. You can also search for that here and that will bring you to the bottom of the head script. I'm gonna create a new line break here. I'm just gonna paste the Google tag code here. So I used control V or command V. I'm gonna select this and hit tab. Now this is just for formatting for my own sake. You don't necessarily need to do this, but I think it's gonna look a little nicer closed in here. And I'm gonna go one back here so I can see the top script matching the bottom script tag. Oh, sorry, this script tag here matching this one here, as there is another closing one here. So just like that, you're gonna hit save. Now it may take a few hours, but once you hit done here, it should show up as verified. Once it's verified, you know that it is gonna be tracking correctly. So this is gonna conclude the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope the steps made sense. I'll leave a help article link that Shopify created as well. It's also gonna include that dynamic code snippet. Let me know in the questions if you have any comments or questions. If you enjoyed the video, I would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.